The Young and the Restless, Spoilers, Phyllis and Jordan, A Deadly Confrontation in Genoa City The late afternoon sun cast a soft glow over Genoa City Memorial Hospital as Phyllis Summers packed her belongings. Her recovery had been slow but steady, and the thought of finally leaving the hospital brought her a sense of relief. She was eager to return to her life, albeit a life still shrouded in the mystery surrounding Heather's death and Sharon's alleged involvement. As Phyllis Phyllis folded the last of Rose into her bag, a knock at the door interrupted her thoughts. She glanced up, expecting a nurse or perhaps one of her children, but instead, a figure stepped inside. A woman, tall and draped in a dark coat, her face partially obscured by a wide-brimmed hat and oversized sunglasses. Phyllis immediately felt a prickle of unease. Can I help you? she asked, her tone guarded. The woman stepped closer, her movements deliberate, almost predatory. Phyllis Summers, she began, her voice low and measured, you're just as sharp as they say. Phyllis straightened, her instincts kicking in. Who are you? And what are you doing here? The woman didn't answer immediately. Instead, she pulled a chair over and sat down, crossing her legs with an air of unsettling calm. I've come to propose an alliance, she said finally, her lips curling into a faint smile. You and I, we could do great things together, starting with Sharon Newman. Phyllis's heart skipped a beat at the mention of Sharon's name. Alliance? She echoed, her eyes narrowing. I don't think so. I don't work with strangers, especially not ones who barge into my hospital room uninvited. The woman's smile widened, though it didn't reach her eyes. Oh, I think you'll reconsider when you hear what I have to offer. Sharon deserves to pay for her crimes, don't you agree? Together, we can ensure she ends up where she belongs, behind bars. Phyllis folded her arms, her suspicion deepening. I don't know who you think you are, but Sharon didn't kill Heather. Someone else did, and I have a feeling you know more about it than you're letting on. The woman's composure faltered for a split second, a flicker of surprise crossing her face. And how would you know that? She demanded, her voice sharper now. Phyllis smirked, sensing she had struck a nerve. Let's just say I've done my homework. Heather's death wasn't an accident and it wasn't Sharon's doing. There's a puppet master behind all of this, and maybe, just maybe, I'm looking at her. The tension in the room thickened as the woman stood abruptly, her hands trembling slightly as she reached for the brim of her hat. With one swift motion, she removed it, along with her sunglasses and wig, revealing her true face. Phyllis froze. The woman standing before her was none other than Jordan Howard, a figure deeply entangled in the twisted web of Sharon's life. The revelation sent a jolt of fear through Phyllis, but she quickly masked it with defiance. Jordan, Phyllis said, her voice steady despite the racing of her heart. I should have known. Jordan's eyes burned with a mix of frustration and resolve. You're smarter than I gave you credit for, but that won't save you. She reached into her coat, pulling out a small handgun and leveling it at Phyllis. If you make one move, one sound... I won't hesitate. Phyllis's breath caught, but she forced herself to remain calm. What do you want from me, Jordan? If you think you can force me to help you, you're wasting your time. Jordan's grip on the gun tightened. I don't need your help. I need your silence. You know too much, and that makes you a liability. Phyllis considered her options. She couldn't scream. There was no guarantee anyone would hear her in time. And she couldn't fight back not while Jordan had the upper hand. Her only hope was to stall for time. Let's be rational about this, Phyllis said carefully. You don't want to do this here. This hospital is full of people. Someone will see you, and then what? You'll be running for the rest of your life. Jordan's jaw clenched, but she didn't lower the gun. You don't scare me, Phyllis. But you're right about one thing. This isn't the place. You're coming with me. Phyllis shook her head. I'm not going anywhere with you. A tense silence hung between them, the air crackling with unspoken threats. But before Jordan could press further, the sound of voices echoed from the hallway. Phyllis's family had arrived, their laughter and chatter growing louder as they approached her room. Jordan's eyes darted to the door, and for the first time, a hint of panic crossed her face. Lucky you, she muttered, backing toward the window. But don't think this is over. Without another word, Jordan turned and slipped out of the room, disappearing into the night, just as Phyllis's children entered. Summer and Daniel greeted their mother with warm smiles, 
unaware of the danger that had just left the room. Secrets revealed. As the hours passed, Phyllis struggled to process what had happened. Jordan's sudden appearance, her veiled threats, and the undeniable implication that she was involved in Heather's death all pointed to a larger conspiracy. But what should Phyllis do now? If she went to the police, Jordan might retaliate. If she told her family, she risked dragging them into a dangerous situation. For now, Phyllis decided to stay silent, but she knew she couldn't ignore this forever. Jordan's presence in Genoa City was a ticking time bomb, and sooner or later, the truth would come to light. The question was, would Phyllis be ready when it did?